Welcome to Italics, television for the Italian-American experience. I'm Lucia Grillo, in for Anthony Tamburri, who is in Italy. It's gala season in Italian America. This episode of Italics takes us to the St. Regis, New York, and Cipriani, 42nd Street, for NOIA, the National Organization of Italian-American Women's 35th Anniversary Gala, and NIAF, the National Italian-American Foundation's 2016 New York Gala. <laughs> This year marks the 35th anniversary of the National Organization of Italian American Women. To join in the celebration, we went to Noya's annual luncheon, held on April 16th at the St. Regis, New York. I got to talk with honorees Alison Camerota, CNN anchor and co-host of CNN's morning show New Day, and Jean Mariani Sullivan, founding principal of Starvest Partners, as well as Noya Chair, Maria Tamburri, and more. Let's go to the St. Regis. I've been involved for about um, nine years now, almost ten, and it's, I guess it's what I know about its inception when it first started. It was started by a group of Italian-American women who wanted to create a network to support their professional and educational aspirations. And that's basically still our mission. Um, we've, we've gotten bigger. We have regions in Rhode Island, Connecticut, Greater Washington, D.C., New York. And along with getting bigger, our demographic is, is changing, and it's getting younger, which is good. We've uh, had a big drive to encourage college women to get involved. And of course, we have our youth programs that have been formalized over the years, scholarship, ta Italian cultural exchange with the Italian ministry, and our mentoring programs. So those things, we're just, and we're getting bigger. So those are the things that um, I've seen probably have changed originally. What women are looking for from NOIA has also probably changed over the years. Yeah, I think so. Um, there, there are more professional women now, obviously. I mean, more and more women have entered to higher level. We, you know, we have, you know, judges and attorneys and physicians. So I think that's different. When Noya started, there were probably more women. We, we have homemakers amongst, you know, our members as well. But there were a lot of women and younger people who, who didn't have parents that had the experience of college. So they needed mentors. And I think that's, that's a change where we have more professionals in our ranks now. I think I've seen a change through the years. I think, number one, the women who were struggling with the idea of being a mother and a wife and having a career, we see a lot less of that now. I think women have very nicely stepped into careers, their professions, without the kind of emotional struggle that often comes with that kind of uh, issue. And I think because of the great women we've had, I think the stereotypes are changing. I think, um, you know, we've had such, we, are on, we don't fight stereotypes directly. What we do is we promote the best of our culture. And with that, I think the stereotype has changed a lot in 35 years. I mean, we had a woman, Italian-American woman, run for vice president in the United States. Can't beat that. <laughs> Tell us how you balance all you do and find, still find time to be part of this organization. So I think balance is, first of all, a, a difficult word because we're never fully balanced. The question is, what are our priorities? And I think priorities change over time. And for me, with Noya, uh, in the, I have a family, I have children, and I also have a busy job. But with Noya, it really feeds to who I am. And so making time for Noya is a critical part 
of, of, of what I want to do and what I've been doing for the past six years. It's a terrific organization and uh, we should all find balance for and time for the things that are really most meaningful to us. What changes do you still think we need for Italian Americans and Italian American women especially to be fully considered in in America? Well, I think the word has to get out to the mothers that have daughters now and the fathers that, hey, your daughter is just important as your son and she'll make a difference and she will. I was the last of nine children. I had four older sisters. When they completed high school, they were expected to go to work. The boys were encouraged to go to college. So in that generation, which is a long time ago, uh, I think that has changed somewhat. And if I were a parent today with young children, especially girls, I would encourage the path of education to develop equality. If they get themselves an education and can accomplish a professional level, there is no reason why they can't match any man. Tell us what it feels like to be honored by an organization of Italian-American women. Well, I come from a long line of fabulous Italian women, and they gave me a voice and a great love of making things happen, a belief in myself, and I'm delighted to be here today. Thank you. Things. And you work a lot with women, specifically in your work. I have a voice for women, and I'm a fierce advocate for girls and women, showing them the way, helping their companies get funded, breaking down barriers that have been there for women, especially around entrepreneurism, being on boards, getting into the C-suite, and it's thrilling. What kind of changes have you seen for Italian-American women specifically in your years in, in, in your line of work? You know, I don't think of it that way. I just think of it broadly as women, a big, diverse group of women that I work with. And what is great is, guess what? The men we are marrying and the sons we are having are having daughters. And that's changing the game for all women because we want those daughters to succeed. Even grandfathers who only sent their sons to college want their daughters to have the right school, the best jobs. What does it feel like to be honored on this anniversary? And what would you like to see for Italian American women from here, here on? Well, I'm very honored to be part of the 35th. I mean, that what a testament to them that they've been around for 35 years and that they've been role models and mentoring young women for 35 years. So I'm so happy to be a part of that. And, you know, I'm a little sad because with each year, some of the Italian culture gets diluted. You know, every one of us that doesn't marry another Italian, it gets diluted a little bit, and I'm guilty of that. So the idea that you can still come here and it's still just as strong and everybody gets the cultural references and everybody understands the love of family and food and history and culture, it just makes me so happy. All of the women that I've met here, the older women remind me of my relatives, of my beloved grandmother. The younger women remind me of my cousins. You know, there's just a universality to being an Italian-American woman that we all get. And so I, I respect that they're carrying the torch for that. Thank you for joining us this afternoon for the National Organization of Italian-American Women's 35th Anniversary Luncheon. I do strongly believe in your work, in your action, in your activities. You carry out with such a passion, with such an expertise. I think the role of uh, Italian-American women has been, is, and will be always crucial. So I want to really to express all the commitment you know of the Consulate General in New York for your activities. My personal commitment, I have to say, let me say that I do admire your uh, positive tolerance towards a man who is the new Consul General <laughs> after su succeeding a woman. So really, let's work together, let's work a lot together. Viva le donne, viva noia, viva l'Italia, viva New York. Thank you. I'd just like to speak for just a minute about Noia and our mission, which we accomplish in many ways. We accomplish our mission by strengthening the ties among members, our members, through Italian cultural programs, locally, nationally, and even internationally. 
and also through special events like this one that inspire and promote the professional achievements of women of Italian heritage in the workplace and community. We also invest in our young women through mentorship, scholarship, and cultural exchange programs and fostering alliances with Italian and Italian-American organizations in support of our history, culture, and language. Yes, it was more than 35 years ago, under the leadership of Dr. Aileen Riotto Sire, that a group of Italian-American women sought to create a national network to support their educational and professional endeavors. It is my pleasure to present our founder and chair emerita, who served as our first president for seven years and board chair for 25 years, Dr. Aileen Riotto Sire. I would like to uh, officially, on behalf of the board, who are in unanimous agreement that our chair, our fearless leader, Maria, and we want to thank you so much for your steady hand, your dedication, and sincerity. Thank you. Okay. Uh, since I, it's our anniversary, I'd like to take you back to the early 80s when we got started. <clears throat> At that time, we had seen the black movement, Black is Beautiful in the 60s, and the women's movement in the late 70s, 60s and 70s. And there became a little bit of interest in ethnicity at that particular time. I personally was trying to understand how our ethnic background shaped us, how our common history and our culture shaped our values, our behavior, the way in which we saw the world. There was a lot in the mental health literature at the time about blacks and Hispanics, but nothing about Italian Americans. So around that time, I attended a program where the newly elected congresswoman, Jerry Ferraro, was on a panel with a number of Italian-American political leaders. At the end of the program, I introduced myself to Jerry, and we chatted for quite a while. And as I was leaving, I asked her if she knew of any Italian-American women's groups. She said, no, not for women. There are men's and women's groups where the men make the speeches and the women make the coffee. <laughs> she said, why don't you start one? Well, I have to tell you that was the farthest thing from my mind at that time. But I did and she did. She said she would help and she was there for us. We have two founding members with us today. Women who were with us on July 14th, 1980. And one of them is a board member who has been with us ever since we started in 1980. I'd like you to meet our longest serving board member for almost 36 years. She's our playwright in residence, Donna DiMatteo. Donna, come up here. Our second founding member who was with us at the beginning and has been with us all along, has done so much for our organization. She has done so much as former First Lady of New York State. She is the founder and chair of Mentoring USA and internationally. And recently, her son, Andrew, gave her a job, a non-paying job, <laughs> as the uh, head of mentoring New York State. But most important, I always think of her as the most beloved woman in our community. Thank you, my friend Matilda Cuomo. I really, really feel this organization can do so much more with the great women that they have. But we're a little short for time. so. I can just say that I am going to reach out also, as I am across the state, it's called the New York State Mentoring Program. And yes, I do it pro bono, unlike the governor who thought I... I knew there would yeah. be a commercial. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to ask the women who are really active in the organization to be giving us a, just in one hour, one hour a week, 
to give to a child. We do all the training, set it all up. All you have to do is be there and help this child one-to-one, -one. and it works. We reach 10,000 people in the New York State Mentoring Program with Mario Cuomo. They all went to high college. It's all in the archives, all chronicled. Governor Pataki cut it out. He knows why, I don't know. We all don't know, but Andrew reinstated it. We need it. The children are failing all over the state in schools. We have to help. We really do. He convinced me at a state of the state message that he gave to the whole state that his mother would be chairman pro bono. That's what I'm saying. I've never been anything but pro bono. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> just to set this record. But the fact is, though, we are moving ahead. And if we could combine the cultural Italian culture with mentoring to come when you get to a child to really be a person personifying what Italian culture is all about because you know you're you've been in this organization you know what to do and of course I'm reaching out all over the state and we're moving ahead if you have any ideas call me write to me thank you very much Bravo. it is now my honor to present our first uh, the anniversary award for our 35th anniversary to one of our honorees. Our first honoree is probably familiar to most of you who watch CNN in the morning. Perhaps you're enjoying a cup of coffee while listening to the insight she brings to the morning news. Allison Camarado. Allison is an anchor and co-host on CNN's morning show, New Day, with Chris Cuomo and Michele Pereira. It's 35 years for National Organization of Italian American Women, and after 35 years, I think we can all say it's a new day. Allison, would you? The Italian American women in my family were not only role models in their own ways on many levels, but they were also wonderful champions. They told me that I could do whatever I wanted when I grew up. They uh, never said, don't go into broadcast journalism, it's too competitive, there are too many people, um, obviously do something more practical. They never said that. They said, we think that you would be great at that. They never said, when I said that my dream was to be a national newscaster, they never said, oh, that's, that's you know, out of, the realm of possibility. They said, of course you'll be that. And I'm so grateful that they always cheered me on and they encouraged me and they supported me and I really am eternally grateful to them for saying the sky was the limit. I am honored uh, to present to you all our second uh, Noya 35th anniversary award to a woman of incredible accomplishments in the area of business. Uh, across the country and throughout the world, and someone who inspires so many other women to reach their full potential as well, Jean Mariani Sullivan. <laughs> Jean is the Chief Inspiration Officer, what a title, of Sullivan Adventures and co-founder of Starvest Partners, a New York venture capital firm that raised $400 million to invest in technology-enabled business services companies. We are so proud and honored to have Jean with us today. Mostly, we are honored to celebrate her accomplishments as a successful woman of Italian ancestries and thrilled to share the award with all of you for our 35th anniversary. Jean, please come up. So I am proudly one of the few women in the venture capital business. How thrilling to have co-founded a venture capital firm here in New York. Never mind that my, there were three women general partners and we had our one trophy male. So that, was, that has been a thrilling run to, to be on many boards, to really see uh, the smartest of the smart, and I love to share the stupid of the stupidest all at once. <laughs> it's, it's been a wild ride. I want to express our appreciation again to everyone for being here, being part of this, to, uh, to our honorees, to everyone who participated.
tweet at us for your copy of Italic's Noia 35th limited edition commemorative DVD. <laughs> NIAF held its annual New York gala at Cipriani 42nd Street. We talked to honoree Mike Piazza, slated to be inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in July, and others on the red carpet. NIAF board members told of a scholarship dedicated to the honorable Marie L. Garibaldi, NIAF Executive Vice President and former New Jersey Supreme Court Justice who died in January. The scholarship will be announced during the Foundation's 41st Anniversary Gala in Washington, D.C. in October. Let's watch some highlights from the New York Gala. like to see for Italian Americans where where would we be when we're finally there I think when we're finally there we've got a community that is taken seriously in Italy that Italians appreciate as part of their tree a branch a different branch of the same tree uh, a community that knows its roots knows the towns that they come from uh, hopefully takes back their language and can integrate themselves at, with all of the Italian communities around the world that's the vision I think you know we're beyond the stage of immigration, we're beyond the stage of integration, now the stage of bringing everyone back together is what we have to work on. The discrimination when our, our grandparents came over in, in the 19th century and had to, had to go through so much this discrimination and now we, we finally got to, the, to, to, to let the people know what kind of people we really are and we're very artistic people, we're athletes and we're, we're just super Italian Americans. To be with a wonderful group of paisans, and I see so many people saying hello, and and you know I haven't seen them in so long, and being back, but to support NIAF for the wonderful work it does, you know, uh, for us, for Italian Americans, and for a lot of people, whether it's education, promoting our culture and our heritage, it's just uh, a wonderful organization, and it's great. It's sold out tonight. We got a lot of support, and we're honoring some great people like uh, Mike Piazza and Lou Conasecca, and so it's a great night. Well, I think ultimately we just have to continue to pass the traditions on through the ch our children and our children's children. I mean, it's it's difficult because it's a society today where we have very short attention span and, you know, families don't connect as much around the table because everyone's on the computer and have schedules. So you just have to try to reinvent ourselves and build back those traditions that really kept us together. When I was a little more than 20 in my hometown, 4,000 people in Northern Italy, and I really wanted to come to complete my studies here in the U.S. Among the other people that I wrote to, out of connections from friends, family, was Vincenzo Marra, that at that time was already in NIAF, I don't remember in what capacity, and he suggested me to contact a professor that at that time was at the University of Delaware, Professor Di Pietro. Professor Di Pietro was temporarily at the University of Virginia and he told me they're looking for Italians here they're building an Italian program and the professor in charge want to have Americans and Italian students together in this graduate program so I wrote immediately the weekend after I was already in Rapallo Italy meeting with this professor and from that connection came the concrete tie that brought me to this country so it's an indirect tie but a very important one for me because I think NIA does a lot in terms of political lobbying, advocating for Italian Americans, of course creating fellowships and, and scholarships and that's of the utmost importance and from my point of view I can testify to the importance of that but it's also the interconnection that they create, the, the letting people know about opportunities. That is as important if not more important than all the rest and I I was a beneficiary of that, so I can testify to it. It's interesting, we have kind of a new immigration happening, younger, educated professionals, yeah. um, which is a very different immigration from what we've known. Do you think that they're going to eventually feel like Italian Americans? I do, because I think that they're going to be the vanguard to show Italy that the Italian Americans of popular mythology are not what's really here. You know, this is a community that has done so much in its uh, generations here, has accomplished so much, has achieved in every field. And I think it's nice that uh, new Italians can come and be a part of that and integrate. And so many people in the room tonight are Italian born and feel part of this community. So I think as we grow, 
all of these Italian communities around the world are going to start growing back together into a global diaspora, like many ethnic groups do. I mean, there's, you know, Chinese diaspora and a Filipino diaspora, and there's no reason there can't be an Italian one. And um, and what, any news for NIAF? Anything that you want to announce? Well, we've got a lot of great news. Uh, obviously, we are preparing now to go to our region of honor in June, in Piedmonte will be our region of honor this year. We'll announce that tonight. Very excited to work with the region of Piedmont. Obviously, so much that can be brought to the table for our gala in October and wonderful companies, and so that's very exciting. And uh, we're looking forward to a wonderful October, Italian American Month. Great success last week with Colorado uh, preserving Columbus. Day. I wanted to ask you about that. So, yes, it was for Italian Americans to have a day is great, but you had that wonderful panel. Kind of <laughs> a little bit panel heated, but just brawl, yeah, panel just, justly brawl, because yeah. it is a topic that yeah. we should be talking about, and it was right for you to bring it up. Yeah. In light of that and this thinking, and Italian Americans who don't agree that with that, who want a day but do not want this as their symbol, what are what's your thinking on that? Well, I think the battle right now is really less about Columbus from our perspective than it is about the Italian American Day. Right now, let's secure our Italian American Day. And then as a community, we can turn around and examine what Columbus means for our heritage or what he does and doesn't represent about who we are. But we can't allow ourselves to lose our holiday because then we'll have nothing to talk about amongst ourselves. And that's gotta be the first battle, I think. Paying it forward, giving it back, we've been afforded tremendous opportunities to do that. My father, over the years, gave to me the number first thing you don't have to brag. If you're good, people will know about it. The second thing, never have short arms. When you go to that bar, put your $10 on the bar. And then the third thing he said, be there when people need you. And with that, I leave you this evening. Thank you very much. I tell you tonight, when I go into that Hall of Fame this year, each and every one of you, your mothers, your fathers, your grandfathers, and your grandmothers, go in to that Hall of Fame with me. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to engage in presentations from the Calandra Institute's annual conference. This year's theme, Migrating Objects, coming soon on Italics TV. Thanks for watching this episode of Italics. Tune in to our next program, premiering June 29th. I'm Lucia Grillo, in for Anthony Tamburri. Arrivederci alla prossima puntata. Thank you.